How's it going everyone? The PlayStation Store's Essential Sale is wrapping up. Today is the final day for you to check out the deals. We uploaded a lot of videos covering it. We're going to compile them all into this single video. And if you want to check out the deals, you can check them all out in this video. So enjoy the content. Summer Sale kicks off tomorrow, so certainly we will be covering that in depth. But uh, enjoy, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. How's it going, everyone? The PlayStation Store is running its excellent essential pick sale right now, and I am here to look at some of the deals under $5. A lot of great stuff under $5. Obviously, a lot of reiterating of the same stuff, but there's always like four of you that don't own these games, so let's get right into it and let's start things off with what i think is quite possibly the best deal across this entire sale and it is kingdom come deliverance royal edition 90 percent off for 3.99 i think it's super smart that i don't know who made the decision deep silver warhorse uh to cut this game's cost even lower as we're coming up on the release of kingdom come deliverance 2 i just think it's going to make a lot of people check this game out the fact that it's 3.99 i mean that's a bargain Given that you're getting the base game, given that you're getting all of the DLC content. Now, KCD, let's be honest, isn't a game for everyone. I think the more realistic approach isn't going to vibe with a lot of people. But if you like the historical setting, I really think that is the biggest drawing card that this game has. I think its setting, its world is absolutely fantastic. It can be a little bit overwhelming uh, at times figuring out like everything you want to do in the game but I think it's a really really well done game a captivating narrative as well for $3.99 with the bonus content I think this is a great deal and um gotta give Warhorse a lot of credit as well for revealing Kingdom Come Deliverance too and not doing any of this it'll be out in 2033 guys no it's out later this year which I think is just fantastic even if it gets pushed to 2025 which I don't think it's gonna be it's just more of what Warhorse has been doing, uh, you know, letting something cook and then revealing it and then following up with the release. And then also, again, I don't know who made the decision of uh, discounting this game so heavily, but yeah, it's going to make a lot more people hopefully check it out. Next up, Burnout Paradise Remastered, 75% off for $4.99. I love Burnout Paradise. I think it's a excellent open world arcade racer. Now, this is a game that came out, wait for it, in January of 2008, yes, it has been almost 17 years since Burnout Paradise came out. Holy hell, that is insane to think about. I remember when Burnout Paradise initially came out and what immediately, you know, for 11, 12 year old me, immediately drew me into Burnout Paradise and made me really enjoy it was the soundtrack. I thought the soundtrack was awesome and obviously, you know, licensed music always going to be a little bit subjective, but when you got... Songs like, you know, um, uh, My Curse by Kill Switch Engage. You've got a song from the same band that did the Dragon's Dogma theme, which is a great song. It's called Friction. Awesome song. There's just a lot of great tracks in Burnout Paradise. That's what I'm trying to say. And I'm actually interested in how EA got around, like, the licensing agreements and everything like that. Like, with these racing games and licensed music, it's always kind of a crap show as far as keeping the game listed, uh, as far as that's concerned. But thankfully, it's still live. I don't know if it's going to get pulled at some point. You always got to be a little bit cautious about that, but Burnout Paradise Remastered has been out for like six years now, so great open world arcade racer. Some dated elements there for sure, uh, but overall, really did enjoy that. Again, a game that's enjoyable to just kick back, relax, and have a fun time in an open world with a lot of chaos, a lot of mayhem. That's exactly what you're going to get out of Burnout Paradise. Next up, we have Castle Crashers Remastered, 80% off for two 99. I mean, this is to me one of the more iconic co-op games of all time. I know some people say that you can have a great time with just playing it solo. Actually, well, whenever I said I feel like Castle Crashers is very much designed to be played in co-op, somebody vehemently uh, commented and responded to me being like, you don't know what you're talking about. Castle Crashers can be played solo. And like, yo, I get it. It's a fun action beat-em-up, but I just think about this game as one of those games you kick back with your boys, you just shoot the crap, and uh, you have a good time and not take life too seriously. Like, that's what I feel like Castle Crashers really excels at. A very charming, cartoony art style that has just aged pretty well for a game that's, what, 15 years old? 13 years old? Something like that at this point? Um... Yeah, just a great game. Get your boys to pick it up, or if you want to play it solo, give it a shot. It's only $2.99. It's going to be a great pickup there. Next up, we got Little Nightmares, 75% off for $4.99. This is one of those uh, atmospheric horror titles that I really go to bat for and I try to give a lot of attention to. It's just really, really well done. And if I can say one thing about Little Nightmares that it excels at comparatively to a lot of horror games, and horror games... They don't all fit under the same umbrella. They can target different aspects of that horror uh, element 
to really resonate with, but I feel like with Little Nightmares, the eeriness of the game, like how much of the game is psychologically engaging and just how much you're a little bit bugged out playing the game, I feel like Little Nightmares does a really, really good job. Just having that right amount of eeriness that's like, okay, it's an engaging experience as far as that's concerned. $4.99 is a great price for it. Little Nightmares 2 is a great game as well. Little Nightmares 3 in development right now. Happy to see this is a franchise that is kind of, you know, taken off to an extent, all things considered. Next up, we got Castlevania, Requiem, Symphony of the Night, and Rondo of Blood. 80% off for $3.99. Uh, Symphony of the Night is one of the most iconic PlayStation 1 games of all time. I, I would even say one of the most iconic video games of all time. Like, if you want to talk about Castlevania games, Metroidvania-style titles, uh, S Symphony of the Night is one of those games that people constantly bring up and talk up. It's a little bit... Obviously, like, PS1 was my first console, but, you know, being a child, I only had access to a limited number of games. And Symphony of the Night, I think a buddy of mine, when I was, like, really young, had it, but I never got super into it back in the day. It's one of those ones that I played years down the line. And I had a good time with it, but I probably don't have that attachment towards it that a lot of other people have. Rondo of Blood was a game that was out for a while overseas, but then it came stateside when Dracula X Chronicles, I want to say, came out on the PSP, and that's how I initially played the game. Yeah, I was a PSP fiend, and you damn right, I was playing D Dracula X Chronicles. That, that game was pretty solid as well, but, um... Yeah, you got Symphony of Night, Rondo of Blood, 80% off, $3.99, pretty good price there. Next up, we got XCOM 2, 95% off for $2.99. One of those tactics games that I always go to bat for as well. Uh, I think Firaxis is an incredibly talented studio, and I loved XCOM Many Me Unknown. Played that back uh, during summer break one year on PC and just absolutely loved it, even though tactics games aren't my cup of tea. XCOM 2, on the other hand, uh, definitely had some shortcomings when it came from the technical side of things. Unfortunately, that left a lot to be desired, and it's not like this game got a PS5 upgrade or anything like that. But I still think from a fundamental tactics gameplay standpoint, it's really well done. You're paying $2.99, and that's a bargain. I do usually recommend to try to pick up XCOM 2, the collection that is not on sale right now, and uh, that base price of $100, do not be paying that. It does go on sale for like 8 9 bucks though, or even $10, and for that price point, I would say it's definitely worth it. You get the base game, War of the Chosen, and some other DLC content, but if you just want to stick to the cheap side, you want to check out the base game, $2.99 for XCOM 2 is a pretty solid pickup as well. Next up, we got Mirror's Edge Catalyst, 75% off for $4.99. This is one of those games that when it was revealed, people were incredibly excited about it just because I don't think a lot of people expected us to actually get a follow-up to Mirror's Edge because the game wasn't like a commercial home run back in 2008. But Catalyst got revealed. It was more of a game that anybody can pick up and enjoy you know, its own story. Um, and there's a lot of things I like about Mirror's Edge Catalyst, and I feel like it's one of those games that back in, I want to say it was 2015 when it came out, yeah, people were disappointed by it, but also it's a game that people are going back and playing recently. I'm not saying people are going back in droves, but the people that are are like, hey, there's a good game here. There's a worthwhile game to play here, and I absolutely believe that's the case. Some gorgeous visuals for a game that's almost a decade old looks fantastic to this day, and it still has some great parkour platforming gameplay. For $4.99, I think it's a great pickup. You're going into it with much more tempered expectations than, you know, people did back in 2015, and again, for this price point, I think it's a great pickup. Next up, for the two people that don't own Limbo, 75% off for $249. Incredibly atmospheric platformer. Uh, relatively short, of course, but I feel like this is one of those games that, uh, when it came out as a downloadable title, was incredibly compelling and kind of showcased the ceiling that downloadable titles and smaller scale games had. Limbo absolutely kind of showcased that. Inside, also a great game done by Playdead. And I believe the creator of Limbo recently also did Cocoon, which is a really well-received game. So take that for what you will. But $249 for Limbo, great price there. Next up, we got Frostpunk Console Edition, 85% off for $449. Now, Frostpunk is a game that I spent the bulk of my time on PC. It's one of those city builders that's just going to be city builder survival games that's just, you know, made for a keyboard and mouse. But it makes a, a pretty smooth transition to the PlayStation controls as well, and is worthwhile to play. Uh, certainly, it's not a game that's for everyone in the sense that, you know, city builders are just not going to vibe with everybody. But if you want a game with some depth to it, nuance, and, you know, kind of emotionally gripping decision making, I feel like Frostpunk gives you a lot of that. Um, city builders on consoles and, you know, with a controller is still something that I feel like isn't going to be the ideal way to play the game, but it still works very well, and if console is the only thing you have, Frostpunk is a totally suitable experience on PlayStation. Not the complete collection, unfortunately. Uh, that is not on sale right now, but the base game for $4.49, good price there. Next up, Mad Max, 75% off for $4.99. Guys, I really enjoyed Mad Max. I thought it was a pretty well-done open-world 
action title. I thought the action combat was really well done and just a very, very satisfying uh, gameplay style to it. Narratively, it does pick up by the end, but uh, unfortunately, we'll never get a sequel to it. The thing that stood out to me about Mad Max, even back in 2015, is that this game ran incredibly well. Obviously, it takes place in a barren desert, so it's not like... You know, visually it looks fine, but it's not blow away, but I just remember the gameplay being incredibly smooth. $4.99, a good pickup here, I would check it out. Resident Evil Revelations, 75% off for $4.99. The Forgotten Resident Evil game, one of the more underrated Resident Evil titles, originally released as a Nintendo 3DS exclusive, then got remastered on PS3, 360, and, um, and PC, and then it came out on PS4, Xbox One. Good game, visually, again, it's a remastering of a 3DS game, so keep that in mind, but Looks very, uh, fairly good. Gameplay solid. Narratively, I enjoyed it. And for $4.99, I think RE Revelations is a good buy. And again, a forgotten game in the Resident Evil universe. And lastly, we got Soma. 90% off for $2.99. This is legitimately one of my favorite horror games of all time. It really does excel at being psychologically gripping. And uh, that is one of those elements that I feel like if a horror game can land on... Uh, it very much creates a compelling experience and I feel like Soma landed on that perfectly where you don't play as an overpowered soldier or anything like that and it takes place in this very very trippy eerie as well uh, underwater remote research facility looks great from a visual standpoint and just a worthwhile game very much short on the shorter side but for $2.99. No brainer there if you're remotely into horror titles. But that is going to do it for me. Again, a lot of great PlayStation game deals available right now. Links to all of these in the description box below. As always, thanks for watching. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. And goodbye. How's it going, everyone? The PlayStation Store is running its excellent Essential Pick Sale, and there's a lot of great deals, and we're going to highlight some of those deals that are under $10. And if you want to get these deals even cheaper, here's a word from our sponsor where you can get PSN credit a little bit cheaper. This video is brought to you by CDKeys.com, where you can get PSN credit even cheaper. Just go on over to the site, pick whatever amount you want to buy, and you'll get it even cheaper. Check out and immediately you will get a code that you can then redeem on the PlayStation Store. Redeem your code and boom, you got your PSN credit and you can buy any of the games we mentioned in this video even cheaper. You can buy games that just came out like Stellar Blade upcoming games. System Shock Remake is coming out, Destiny 2 Final Shape, you've got SMT5 Vengeance in the near future, a lot of great titles coming out here in the near future, and you can get them even cheaper by getting your PSN credit over at CD Keys. Check out the links in the description box below, anything you buy also directly supports this channel and is much appreciated. Now, on to the video. Let's get right into it and let's kick things off with arguably the best deal in this sale. I feel like I've said that about a couple of deals. There's some really solid, solid deals in this sale. Dying Light, the following Enhanced Edition, is 70% off for $8.99. But if you're a Plus subscriber, you save an additional 10% and it's down to $5.99. That is insane. I get it. Most of you guys at this point probably own Dying Light. However, if you don't, you'd be doing yourself a disservice if you didn't check out... Uh, the following Enhanced Edition for $6. I really enjoyed Dying Light 2 as well. However, Dying Light 1 is without a doubt the better game. Visually looks great, even being, yes, almost a decade old. However, to be fair, uh, Techland was updating this game for like eight years. So, you know, a lot of the content and a lot of the updates were more recent. But yeah, Dying Light, really solid open world uh, survival horror zombie game. It's not really the sense of survival horror that it is incredibly atmospheric and psychological. Its atmosphere is fairly good, but you're more so getting into it for the parkour gameplay, the exploration, the combat's fairly good, and I actually think the combat in Dying Light 1 is better than Dying Light 2. Um, but yeah, $5.99 for that, obviously a great pickup. Next up, we got Bayonetta and Vanquish 10th Anniversary Bundle, 75% off for $9.99. For a while, this was going down to $15 or $20. Now, it's settling in at $9.99, and this is a great pickup. Bayonetta, obviously, Obviously is very well known unfortunately probably never gonna get Bayonetta 2 or Bayonetta 3 on PlayStation unless things drastically change with Nintendo but Bayonetta 1 still a damn damn good game and then you get Vanquish as well Vanquish is a game that I constantly go to bat for I actually play this game closer to when it came out and the real issue with Vanquish Obviously, if you were around back in the fall of 2010, I think everybody that played the game back then had the same criticism with the game. Incredibly enjoyable game. Over-the-top action gameplay, fast-paced, just extremely exhilarating. Four to five hour game for a $60 purchase is always going to be a little bit of a hard sell. 
and it's not like Vanquish had a crazy amount of replayability. Obviously, that issue kind of subsides when you're paying $9.99 and you're getting Bayonetta on top of it. Great pickup for the Bayonetta and Vanquish 10th Anniversary Bundle. And honestly, these days, I know you guys have a lot of 50-hour RPGs that you're getting into. Hell, Dying Light, the other game we mentioned, is a sizable experience. Sometimes... Vanquish, a four to five hour game is exactly what you want and uh, a, a nice game to beat in a sitting or two. Um, next up, we got DMC Double May Cry Definitive Edition, 75% off for 9 99 I remember when this game came out. Uh, I believe it was back in 2013. It was uh, quite the controversial release. Look, Devil May Cry is this franchise with an incredible storied history, and they obviously went back to what made DMC DMC with DMC5. DMC Devil May Cry was done by Ninja Theory, same developers of Hellblade and Enslaved Odyssey to the West. Always got to get that shout in there. And uh, if you just assess it as its own standalone action game, it's a pretty enjoyable game. A little bit dated, sure, but an enjoyable game. The Dante redesign isn't great, and, uh, you know, detaching itself from what may, uh, what is Devil May Cry was obviously going to upset people, but at this point, you can just play it as its own action game, and from that standpoint, it's fairly enjoyable. Yeah, $9.99, I think, is a pretty good price for it. Next up, uh, easy recommendation for the two people that don't own it. Batman the Arkham Collection is 90% off for $5.99. Look, this is a tremendous deal for Batman Arkham Asylum, Batman Arkham City, and Batman Arkham Knight. Uh, you got a lot of DLC content in there as well. Arkham Asylum, for a game that is 15 years old, still holds up incredibly well. That combat is still so good visually. It looks pretty good. And, um, yeah, just a great game. Arkham City is my favorite of the three games, and that game is awesome. And Arkham Knight, you know, I know people were critical about the Batmobile sections, but outside of that, it's a damn, damn good game. And uh, I would say well worth uh, the time to go through it. $5.99 for the Arkham Collection. Again, great pickup there. Next up, we got Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, 70% off for $8.99. Uh, we'll also throw in the other Assassin's Creed game I want to mention, Assassin's Creed Unity, 70% off for $8.99. Uh, AC4, rumblings are that they're going to remake this game, a remake for a game that looks as good as AC4. Yes, it is 11 years old, but it's still a little bit surprising to me. Um, but, you know, we'll see how it turns out. AC4 is fantastic. Naval combat is great. Edward Kenway is one of the more underrated Assassin's Creed characters in my opinion. Like, people like him, but I really put him at the level of, like, an Ezio. I get it that Ezio got three games, so he's probably gonna be more of a mainstay uh, to Assassin's Creed fans, but AC4 was great, and I wish they did more with Edward as a, ca uh, as a character, but alas, we can't have great things. And Assassin's Creed Unity, 70% off for $8.99. Now, I played this game in the fall of 2014 when it came out, and it was a technical disaster. I've been meaning to give this game another playthrough for a couple of years now. I gotta go back and give it another shot in terms of just playing it start to finish again. Because the number of people um, that have just told me, brother, you gotta go back and play through Assassin's Creed Unity... The technical issues aren't there, at least not there as much anymore, and it's a fantastic game. Like, people legit rank Unity as one of their favorite games in the entire franchise. Again, the technical issues were absolutely disastrous at launch, and uh, the PC version was just a nightmare, but... You know, with a lot of that resolved, I think a lot of people can go back and play this game as its own experience. And I still need to do that, but I did want to mention it because, again, it's been a sizable amount of people that have been, uh, I'm not going to say pestering me, just telling me, yo, go back and play through AC Unity. And uh, trust me, I, that, that, that does not fall on deaf ears. It's just there's 8 billion games to play, and Unity is not one that I've gone back to, at least recently. But I do have to, and... Uh, yeah, a lot of you guys might be wanting to as well. Next up, I'll give a shout to Last of Us Remastered, 50% off for $9.99. Look, a lot of people don't want to spend uh, $40 on Last of Us Part 1, or I believe it might go down to $30. I think it still goes for $40. It's, it's ridiculous how expensive Last of Us Part 1 is. Look, Last of Us 1 is absolutely awesome, but uh, I would not be spending the Part 1 price. I would just get the remastered version for now, $9.99. It's goodbye. You got left behind in there as well. Look, Last of Us 1 is one of my favorite games of all time, and I thought Last of Us Part 2 absolutely butchered the narrative you guys can think what you want i know it's a divisive topic and uh i'm really curious how people are going to react after season two drops that are only last of us television watchers because i know a lot of people that only watch the tv series um and yeah i think they're in for a ride with uh season two but we'll see how that turns out yeah last of us part one uh is a great game most of you guys at this point have played it but this is a game that i go back 
uh, every now and again and uh, give another playthrough of. Uh, the last playthrough I had was on PC, and it was literally right when the PC version came out, and that was one of the worst PC ports of all time. But I still had a great time, because guess what? Last of Us 1 is just that damn awesome. Next up, Deep Rock Galactic, 70% off for $8.99. Not my favorite game in the world, but this is a game that the studio has been incredibly consistent with dropping updates, and if you're looking for an engaging co-op experience with a lot of replayability, Deep Rock Galactic is going to offer you exactly that, and you're going to be in for a lot of updates coming out as well, so there's a lot to sink your teeth into. Uh, the Deluxe Edition nor the Ultimate Edition are on sale right now, but... Base game for 9 bucks is pretty good. This was a plus game uh, not too long ago as well. Plus essential, that is. Next up, Code Vein. 84% off for $9.59. You guys know me. Love me my anime aesthetic. Throwing that into uh, a Souls-like that's not brutally difficult, but still can be pretty challenging. I think Code Vein was a damn good game. Is it going to be revered at the level of the Dark Souls titles or, you know, the FromSoft games? Absolutely not, but I think it targeted its own audience and for what it is. It's pretty damn good. Not $60 good, but $9.59 good? Oh, you're damn right. It is and uh, for this price point i think it's a great great pickup definitely give it a shot and by the way there is a trial edition available so if you do want to just try the game out that option is open to you next up bully 40 percent off for 8.99 i know people that have been wanting a bully sequel forever i just don't think it's ever gonna happen you guys but uh you know it's an absolutely dated game but to go back and play through it for nine bucks i still think is a pretty good time if you just keep your expectations in check from what you expect out of this game from a technical standpoint i think you'll have a great time with it a quirky game a little bit wacky for sure uh but my recollection of playing through bully is pretty positive and i think you'll get you guys will have a good time with it as long as you can go back and play you know ps2 level games uh wolf among us 50 percent off for 749 fantastic fantastic game incredible narrative and incredible main character i am just counting the or i'm not counting the days it's impossible to count the days for wolf among us season two but i'm just holding on to hope that wolf among us season two actually comes to fruition because at this point starting to lose a little bit of hope but hopefully it does come out wolf among us season one guys started over a decade ago it was like 11 years ago so you know long time coming it's great if you have yet to check it out 749 is a great pickup Lastly, some classic Square Enix PS1 games that are available on uh, PS4 and PS5. Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 9. FF7, I still feel like, is a worthwhile pickup at 639. Uh, remake changes a lot of things, and I think the 7 OG offers a lot to still uh, enjoy. And, uh, you know, if the remake really did, if you really did enjoy it, check it out. I, I think it's a pretty cool experience to go back and play through 7 uh, while you have played the remake. Especially just going through the Midgar section and realizing how effing short that is and the fact that they made that into its own game and it's its own game is great like ff7 remake was awesome but the midgar section in ff7 is so so short uh you know it is crazy that they uh extended that to a 30 hour rpg but still pretty cool to go back and play through that final fantasy 8 remastered 60 percent off for 7.99 uh ff8 to a lot of people is the black sheep of the franchise and to a lot of people it's the most underrated game in the series i think narrative gets a little wild uh, especially in the second half but i enjoyed the game for eight dollars not a bad pickup final fantasy 9 is the one that i am not as crazy about as everybody else a lot of people look at this as their favorite final fantasy game not really for me um in terms of being at that level a remake is coming and i think the final fantasy 9 remake is gonna be more true to the original and i don't think they're gonna segment it into multiple parts we'll see that's my two cents if you do want to wait for the remake see how that turns out that is a fine option to go with but 839 on that and lastly i do want to give a shout to chrono cross the radical dreamers edition 50 percent off for 999 this wasn't one of those early jrpgs that i got super into chrono the, the chrono trigger obviously a little bit before my time on the super nintendo ps1 was my first console uh, but chrono cross wasn't a game that i got super invested into but you know going back and playing it had a pretty good time with it didn't like blow me away with this remake but i still thought it was a pretty enjoyable experience all things uh considered and if you're a fan of jrpgs you'll have a good time with this for sub 10 bucks at 9.99 a good pick up there but that is gonna do it for me again a lot of great deals available as a part of the essential pick sale check them out links in the description box below that is gonna do it for me check out cd keys for your psn credit a little bit cheaper thank you for watching and goodbye
How's it going everyone? The PlayStation Store has kicked off its essential pick sale and I got some good deals under the price of $20, not going under $10 or under $5. Although the first deal I mentioned is going to be $10 for some people, a little bit more expensive for other. You'll see why when we get into this video, but a lot of good deals and let's just get right into it and let's kick things off with what I think is... Quite possibly the best deal in this entire sale. That might be a little bit hyperbole, but I think the Crisis Remastered Trilogy, you guys, 75% off for $12.49. Or if you are a PlayStation Plus subscriber, you'll save an additional 5% for $9.99. I think that's an awesome deal, and we finally got this Crisis Remastered Trilogy to a price point where I can easily recommend it to everybody. This came out uh, back in fall of 2021, and it was exciting to see Crisis 2 and Crisis 3 get ported to PlayStation 4 and being playable on PlayStation 5, but the price point of $50, given that these games readily go on sale on PC for like 5 to 10 bucks, uh, I think the trilogy goes on sale for like, you know, $10, $15 on PC because, you know, obviously the game's been available on PC for so long. So it was just hard to stomach $50. However, for $12.49 or better yet, $9.99, okay, now we're cooking and this is an awesome, awesome price. Crisis 1 is beloved by a lot of people. It's got more of an open level design that I do like. However, Crisis 2 is the one that I really, really enjoyed. It had a great time with it. More linear, more focused, but did really have a great time with Crisis 2. Crisis 3, on the other hand, wasn't crazy about Crisis 3, uh, but it's still enjoyable. Like, you're getting these games for their single-player FPS component. They're all enjoyable games for what they are. Um, I think for $9.99 or $12.49, you know, essentially paying $4 and change a pop if you're paying the regular price or $3 and change if you're paying the $9.99 price, it's a great deal and I would strongly recommend it. Don't expect something blow away. Again, a lot of what carried Crisis back in the day was its technical ability. Like, Crisis back in 2007 was a big deal. Can, you, can your PC run a Crisis? It's on and so forth um and crisis 2 even though it was a pc and console game it looked great on 360 and ps3 even and uh you know that obviously doesn't hold up true to a 2024 audience the game still looked good but uh yeah that element won't be there but for 12.49 or 9.99 tremendous tremendous deal definitely recommended next up for you jrpg heads out there ease 8 lacrimosa of dana 50 percent off for 19.99 is a great pickup a lot of attention or at least Relative to what Ease is, some attention around Ease right now with Ease 10 coming out later this year. You've got um, Memories, uh, Memoir, Oath and Falgot, excuse me, being confirmed for a Western release. Exciting time to be an Ease fan, which was a franchise for a long time. Would get a little bit of the short end of the stick over here stateside, but Ease 8, I feel like did a good job of opening up the audience to a lot of people. Now, with Ease, you really have to keep your expectations in line. The visuals aren't crazy, and fundamentally, they follow a similar style each game, but guess what? That style works. What you get is good action gameplay. You get a quality soundtrack, and with Ease 8, I also found a pretty uh, engaging, mystery-driven storyline that was easy to invest into. $19.99, I think, is a great price for Ease 8, and uh, if you're getting into the franchise, you can really jump into any of the games. Like, they kind of tell their own contained story. Um... But yeah, Ease 8 is a game that a lot of people kicked their uh, Ease journey with. And you can circle back and play some of the other games. There's a lot of Ease titles to go through. And Ease 9 is great as well. But uh, yeah, $19.99 for Ease 8. Great pickup. It is available on Plus Extra, so you can play it that way. Next up... Now, this game isn't fantastic, but I want to give Biomutant a shout. It's $15.99 without a Plus subscription. Really, I would recommend it if you have a Plus subscription. It's $11.99 on that end. This was a Plus Essential title. Biomutant is a game that so many people were really looking forward to. It was done by Experiment 101, a brand new studio. They had developers that had worked on games like Just Cause. And I remember seeing the game, and I'm like, damn, this looks like a really, really compelling open-world action RPG. And it turned out to be okay. Was it worth $60? Oh, hell no. And there were elements of this game that were absolutely great. The narration of this game was terrible. Uh, however, the gameplay I found interesting, and I thought the world was incredibly vibrant and fun to explore. If you're okay with more of like a double-A open-world game that certainly has its shortcomings, I think there's a lot of fun to be found with Biomutant. Uh, just keep your expectations in line, and you can have a good time with it. 
And uh, at this point, you're not going into the expectations that I had back in 2019, and they were probably mistakenly placed. Like, I should have known better than expecting a top-level open-world game out of Biomune, but if you go into it now, I think there's a good experience to be had, and you have the PS5 upgrade here as well, which I think will enhance your experience quite a bit. Next up, Nier Automata Game of the Yorha Edition, 60% off for $15.99. I actually recently started watching the Nier Automata anime series, and uh, I feel like that anime series is pretty well done. Like, for video game out of Expectations, my expectations are pretty low. Like, that Scarlet Nexus anime I thought was terrible. Uh, but Nier Automata, I thought, uh, like, so far of what I've watched of it, I thought the anime adaptation's been pretty good. But what what is the star of Nier Automata? You're damn right, it's the game. The game is absolutely tremendous. And yes, it's a little bit, a little bit would be putting it lightly. It's a lot bit confusing from a narrative standpoint when you play through it initially, but then it comes together really nicely, and the game from a soundtrack standpoint, visual standpoint, the action gameplay done by Platinum is tremendous. $15.99 for it is such a great pickup that I strongly recommend it. Would recommend you to play Near Replicant as well, that's a great time, uh, but Automata is certainly the stronger game. Next up, we got Raccoon City Edition, 75% off for $14.99, this is Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3, the remake, Resident Evil 2, li literally one of the best remakes of all time, done by the same team that did the tremendous RE4 remake, RE2 as a remake is excellent. RE3 obviously has its shortcomings, now I'm not like, I didn't grow up a big Resident Evil fan in the, in the sense that I'm playing the classic, classic titles, the first game that I got super into was the OG RE4, um, but, uh, from all accounts, to those that were super into the original, RE3 is a little bit of a cut experience, and I think they had more hopes for the multiplayer component, etc., etc., but still a, a fun game to go through, very, very short, but RE2, certainly the star here, and for $14.99 to get both, I think that's a damn good deal, $7.50 a pop worthwhile there. Next up, another Capcom release. We got Monster Hunter World Iceborne Master Edition. This is a game that if you're going to be picking it up, clear up a couple weekends because there's a lot to get to here and there's a lot of content and there's a lot that you can sink your teeth into. And it comes down to do you enjoy the gameplay loop? Monster Hunter isn't going to give you this incredible narrative for you to sink your teeth into in the sense that it's going to be emotionally engaging or anything like that. You're really getting into this game to slay the big monsters, to, uh, you know, get better gear and continue through that process. And it's an enjoyable game in that regard, uh, but just keep your expectations in check and you'll have a good time with it. For $19.99, getting the base game and the expansion, I think, is a really good deal. I know there's a lot of excitement around Monster Hunter Wilds. Obviously, if you're picking up th this game, you don't have that affinity towards Monster Hunter yet. And, you know, if you wait until Wilds, you're going to be spending $70 on a game that you don't know if you're really going to get that into. Try out World. You're getting the expansion here. Rise is also on sale with Sunbreak for the same price. That's an option, but World is technically the better game. Rise started out as a Nintendo Switch only title. You get the idea, but uh, yeah, Monster Hunter World 1999 with Iceborne, I think, pretty good. Couple Final Fantasy games. Final Fantasy 12, The Zodiac Age, 60% off for $19.99. I think this is an awesome deal on a super underrated Final Fantasy title. Now, if you go look at it from a critical standpoint, this game's got like a 93 on Metacritic, the original release, that is. But I remember back in 2006 when FF12 came out, there was very much a mixed reception from the audience, uh, the Final Fantasy fandom about this game. It's because, in my opinion, uh, a lot of the pushback was because of the combat style, it played more like an MMO rather than the turn-based combat system that a lot of other Final Fantasy games had employed prior to this. Um, you know, but FF12 from that standpoint, the combat at this point is something that is going to be totally accepted by anybody that's getting into this game now. I think, like, nobody's going to look at the combat and be like, oh, it's not, it's not enjoyable. I think it's a perfectly fine combat system, and... You know, elements like the quickenings, I think, add a cool layer to it. Flashy, if nothing else. My main criticism with Final Fantasy XII is it probably had the least compelling Final Fantasy main character, at least, you know, post-FF3. Vaughn, and I get what they tried to go for with Vaughn in the sense that he's just a regular dude embroiled in this large-scale conflict that's going on around him. And you can make the argument that Ash and Botch and Balthier are more so the characters to get invested into. But Vaughn, Vaughn is the dude. Vaughn is the dude that this story centers around. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying he's a terrible, terrible character. He's just super bland. Um, but narratively, outside of Vaughn, I feel like FF12 has a compelling story, and it has an absurd amount of content. Like, you can really 
uh, invest a lot of time into FF12 if you're trying to do everything. And you don't have to do everything, but and if just going through the main story is going to take you a while. But overall, $19.99, great price on FF12. Uh, maybe not a great price, uh, given that this is originally a PS2 game that got remastered, but it's a Square Enix title. They usually hold up in price. Next up, we have Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition, 60% off for $13.99 now. When Final Fantasy XV came out back in, I think it was 2016, yeah, 2016, I thought this game was incredibly disappointing. I am recommending this game from the lens that you are a new Final Fantasy player, or Final Fantasy XV player, I should say, and you're going into the game with no expectations, because I had grandiose expectations out of this game's narrative. The narrative is completely disjointed and a mess. The combat style, super flashy, super pleasing to look at. The game in general is incredible from a visual standpoint, but the combat can get a little bit redundant. The open world is gorgeous, the soundtrack is great, and you're getting the Royal Edition here, which adds a lot of uh, DLC and whatnot, and the DLC, kinda kinda lame how they did it uh, in this game, but the fact is, with the Royal Edition, you get it, it is kind of uh, content that should have been in the game, but you get the idea. You get a lot of content for your dollar here, and for $14, you're not going into it with the expectation that, oh, it's gonna be this blow-away narrative with this in-depth combat system. No, if you're looking for a fun, open-world action RPG, you'll get that with Final Fantasy XV, and again, you're going into it with much lesser expectation than I did uh, going into the release of the game, which was, um, you know, a lot of people had high expectations when you were following this game for a decade, going back to when it was Versus 13. That was natural going to happen and it was a colossal disappointment on that end. If you end up enjoying Final Fantasy 15, I also recommend watching the Kingsglaive movie. I thought that was a decent little movie. Um, and that content really does add a little bit of context that is necessary for the Final Fantasy 15 narrative. Moving on from that, we have the Devil May Cry HD Collection and 4 Special Edition Bundle 1484. I know a lot of you guys only play Devil May Cry 5 and the thing is, I did enjoy the older Devil May Cry games growing up. However, these games absolutely show their age. Wonky camera, the visuals obviously aren't great from the standpoint that DMC 1 through 3 are PS2 games. DMC 4, um, the development of that game seemingly got cut short. I don't know the exact story that happened with DMC 4 in terms of development, but it, it got really redundant and they had to reuse a lot of content, and I believe that's because the development of the game did get cut short, but DMC 4 is a good game, and visually it still looks pretty decent. I mean, I can't believe that game is 16 and a half years old at this point, which is wild to think about. Um, DMC 1 through 3, they're well done action games, and I should say DMC 1 and 3 are well done action games. People hate DMC 2. I'm not that crazy of a hater of DMC 2. Like, do I think it's, it's as good as DMC 1 and 3? No. Uh, but I still thought it was okay. And the timeline of DMC is uh, kind of weirdly done. I believe it goes DMC 3 into DMC 1 into DMC 4 into DMC 2. Never been super into the DMC narrative, but I think that's how the story is structured. It might be 1 into... 3 into 2 into 4. Uh, again, it's all over the place as far as that's concerned, but uh, yeah, again, DMC narrative never really did anything for me. Next up, Digimon Survive, 75% off for $14.99. Really enjoyed Digimon Survive. I am a huge Digimon fan. Like, Digimon is the IP I grew up with more so than Pokemon. Like, don't get me wrong, I love Pokemon as well growing up, but Digimon is the one that resonated with me more so. So I do have that little bit of bias when it comes to Digimon, uh, the games and everything like that. I enjoyed Survive. You have to know what you're getting yourself into when it comes to this game. It is very much more so a visual novel rather Rather than the tactical RPG gameplay that you'll see as well. Um, the tactical RPG gameplay really makes up a minuscule amount, not a minuscule amount, but a smaller portion than what the narrative driven visual novel is. The story is really good and a little bit darker of a narrative than you're used to out of a Digimon story, but overall, I did enjoy it. Again, if you're okay with the visual novel style to it, you'll have a good time with it. And $14.99, I think, is a pretty good pickup for that. Sonic Colors Ultimate, 60% off for $15.99. It's a well done 3D Sonic game. Great soundtrack, great visuals. Um, content wise, it honestly probably could have been uh, adjusted as far as the content offered, but uh, overall, I had a good time with it. And if you like the throwback Sonic games, like you'll have a good time with Sonic Colors. Is it at the level of Sonic 3D games at their absolute peak? No, but uh, it's a worthwhile game to go through. At $16 is not a bad price point. And then lastly, we got Disco Elysium, the final cut, 70% off for $11.99. Certainly not a game for every 
everyone. Um, I've had friends that I've recommended this game to, and they literally despise this game. It is a slower-paced, methodical, narrative-driven title, but the writing in this game is absolutely excellent, and if you give it uh, the time to really flesh out, it becomes one of the more rewarding narrative-driven experiences that you can go through. For $11.99, again, if you're into your story-based games, you'll love Disco Elysium, and it's generally considered uh, by most people that have played it to be one of the best written video games of all time. So 12 bucks for that, pretty good there. But that'll do it for me. Again, a lot of great deals available. This is just 10 to $20, a lot more to go over. And I know that, um, you know, these deals are always available, but you guys seem to always watch these videos. So I'm gonna keep doing them. That's gonna do it for me. Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. Sound off there. Thank you for watching and goodbye. How's it going, everyone? As the mid-year sale is coming to a close, we have a brand new sale. I mean, it's really just pick a sale out of the hat and let's run with it, I feel, as far as the PlayStation Store is concerned. And it is the Essential Pick Sale, and there are over 2,000 game deals uh, in this Essential Pick Sale. Now, Essential Picks has been a sale that's been available for a while. Like, they brand, um, they've branded PlayStation Store sales as Essential Picks for a long time, but it never really dawned on me. Like, the verbiage used, Essential Picks, like, these are essential to your library. You would think this would be, like, the absolute upper echelon of, like, you guys gotta have these games or you guys gotta have these deals. And then it's, like, casually, no, we're just gonna have over 2,500 or over 2,000 deals. Isn't that, like... Uh, a little bit jarring. Isn't that a little bit oxymoronic when it comes to the uh, idea of an essential pick sale? I get it. It's just verbiage that they use. I shouldn't be dissecting it this much, but you know what? Today, on this beautiful day, I have decided to dissect it. Nonetheless, there are a lot of deals available. I would not say Ark Survival Ascended is an essential pick, but uh, nevertheless, Ark Survival Ascended is on sale 20% off for $35.99. So uh, take that for what you will. I also wouldn't say EA Sports FC 24 is an essential pick. It is 80% off for $13.99. Dragon's Dogma 2, on the other hand, for some people, that might be an essential pick. It's only 20% off for $55.99. By the way, they did add a trial to the game recently. It gives you like two hours of gameplay. It's not a plus premium trial, a trial or anything like that. I wasn't crazy about Dogma 2. I was certainly critical of the game, but I understand that uh, the people that I've talked to that like Dragon's Dogma 2 love Dragon's Dogma 2. And the people that I talk that aren't crazy about it really aren't crazy about it. So it really does seem like it's one of those you either love it or you hate it kind of games. And maybe hate's a strong uh, stretch. I don't hate Dragon's Dogma 2. It just wasn't my cup of tea. And you know what? That's okay. Some games are just not going to be for me. Persona 3 Reload, on the other hand, 30% off for $49. I don't know when they added the plus premium trial for this, but it does have a plus premium trial. How long is it? It is a three-hour game trial for P3R, which really... I mean, that doesn't even scratch the surface. Nevertheless, it's $49. Kind of pricey. Hopefully, uh, Sega and Atlas at some point drop, like, the Super Duper Ultimate Complete Edition because the Digital Premium Edition ain't gonna give you everything, and that's $70, and a Reload is $49. Look, at this point, I would wait for that to be cheaper. Are you getting your money's worth? Yeah, you're getting a lot of hours of gameplay, but I would say, if you've waited, why not wait a little bit longer? Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection, 20% off for $28. I think one of the biggest fumbles of all time in terms of what it could be and what it ended up being. It is what it is. These things happen in gaming, but that one was uh, pretty uh, disappointing. I mean, it still probably sold well. They still probably made uber amounts of money with it, but uh, it could have been so much more, and uh, it just wasn't. Gran Turismo 7 25th Anniversary Digital Deluxe 54. Uh, that's crazy that that's still $54, but... It is what it is. GT always holds up in price, so you kind of have to deal with that. Crew Motorfest, on the other hand, that don't be holding up in price. Deluxe edition of that is down to $32, and the gold edition is $40. Star Wars Jedi Survivor Deluxe is 50% off for $45. That deluxe edition is absolute trash. Uh, it's a $20 surcharge on top of the base game. And it's just cosmetic nonsense that you get. Usually, the cosmetic nonsense deluxe editions are a $10 uh, extra cost over the base game. With Star Wars Jedi Survivor, for whatever reason, it was $20 extra. So, yeah, that deluxe edition was trash, and uh, I would recommend it. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Cross-Gen Bundle, 50% off for $35. I mean, it's up W2. 
Last of Us Part 1 Digital Deluxe is 38% off for $49.59. Again, kind of a crazy deal for Last of Us Part 1. Mortal Kombat 1 Premium Edition is $44. That includes the bonus content, so not a bad deal. Resident Evil 7 and Village Gold Edition. Gold Editions of both. $29.59 on that. I mean, if you are one of the four people that don't have either game... That's a damn good deal. I mean, Resident Evil Biohazard is great. Village is awesome. $29.59 for the gold editions of both those is fantastic. System Shock Remake, 30% off for $28. Not a bad price there for the System Shock Remake. Jujutsu Kaisen Cursed Clash, 34% off for $39.59. Legitimately... Like, I don't want to say it's one of the worst games I've ever played, because I've played some pretty terrible games, but uh, Jujutsu Kaisen Curse Clash, and it goes on sale often, and whenever I see it on sale, I have to go on this rant on this game. Look, that's a super popular anime, and anime fans, me being a Naruto fan and growing up a Naruto fan, I know how down bad we can get to buy uh, the licensed products and the licensed video games, so on and so forth. That game is the wildest anime cash grab in recent memory. Like, recently speaking, you guys, I feel like anime games have been fairly solid. The Naruto games have been fairly good. One Piece Odyssey was pretty damn good. People enjoyed Sandland. Um, you know, the Dragon Ball games are generally pretty consistent and pretty quality-filled. Jujutsu Kaisen Curse Clash is absolute garbage. Garbage! And JJK is fairly popular. It just deserved... A better, uh, a better outing as far as a game goes. And look, I'll be transparent. I'm not the craziest JJK fan. I watched like the first half of season one and I liked it. Uh, it's just, it's really hard for me to sit down and watch a lot of anime these days. But uh, yeah, I played the game and uh, that game was atrocious. Atrocious. And how, how did they have the gall to sell an Ultimate Edition for $100? I know how they have the gall. It's because anime fans can be down bad. And JJK... Uh, is a popular anime, and I'm sure people bought it for $100. Bandai Namco gave me a copy of the game, and I'm still gonna crap on this game based on how bad it was, and, uh, thanks for the copy, but my goodness, like, don't be spending that kind of money. Rant over, if it saved one person from buying this game, that rant was worth it. Uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse Super Bundle is $14.44. Um, Xenoverse 2 is really good. It does have a lot of additional content that I would recommend you to get, like, the, the special edition or whatever, so keep that in mind. Batman Arkham Collection, $5.99. I mean, obviously, that's a great deal with Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and Arkham Knight. Monster Hunter Rise down to $9.99 and Rise and Sunbreak is $19.79. Great deal on that, of course. Definitely worthwhile. Uh, if you want some Monster Hunter, Need for Speed Heat, $5.99. Monster Hunter World and Iceborne Master Edition, $19.99. If you're getting into Monster Hunter, I recommend World and Iceborne, but, um, you know, Rise, uh, some people do prefer Rise, so take that for what it is. Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Anniversary Edition, $16.49. Last of Us Remastered is $9.99. Mortal Kombat X is $4.99. Digital, uh, Dead Space Digital Deluxe edition is $27.99 and I just see okay I just said the Naruto games have been fairly good and I don't know how I totally forgot that Naruto x Boruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections came out last year which was an egregious cash grab as well yo Bandai Namco be going kind of wild with these cash grabs on these anime games like Sparking Zero I'm sure is gonna be great but Storm Connections Jujutsu Kaisen those games were terrible Storm Connections the issue with that was like that was such a copy paste and then once again they decided to release like hundred dollar special editions and all that nonsense like that was a cash grab fundamentally a, a, a serviceable game because like storm is always going to be fairly serviceable but uh yeah just cash grab city as far as that's concerned that game literally should have been like a 9.99 dlc uh, Stardew Valley, 20% off for $11.99. Obviously, that's a great deal. Lords of the Fallen, version 1.5 just came out. $35, however, a little bit too pricey on that. Bully is on sale. That's the PS2 on PS4 Classic. Near Automata, Game of the Yorha Edition, 60% off for $15.99. Great deal on Near Automata. Near Automata is absolutely tremendous. I recommend Replicant as well, but Automata is certainly the better game. Platinum Games did a phenomenal job on the action gameplay of that game, and definitely a worthwhile pickup there. Raccoon City Edition, Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3, $14.99 on that. The RE2 remake is awesome. The RE3 remake is obviously crapped on quite a bit, but the RE2 remake is great. And RE3 is still fine. Like, it's not terrible or anything like that, but uh, goodbye there, of course. Uh, Sniper Elite 5, $18.00. Far Cry 6 is on sale. Atomic Heart, for some reason, is still $35. That 
that price point is revolting, and I thought that game was terrible. Uh, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, $8.99 on that. I mean, Black Flag is goaded. Rumblings of a remake on that as well. Need for Speed Payback, $1.99. Dying Light the following Enhanced Edition, 80% off with your Plus subscription. That might be one of the best deals available in this sale. That is down to $5.99 if you have a Plus subscription. You guys, if you have not played Dying Light 1, that is a tremendous, tremendous deal. And I would highly recommend it. Mad Max, $4.99. Obviously, good deal. There are Sonic Superstars Digital Deluxe, $35. Castle Crashers Remastered down to $2.99. I believe that's a low price for that game. It's available for $1.49 on Steam, but the PlayStation version has been holding up in price a little bit. $2.99 on that is a phenomenal deal on an excellent, excellent co-op title. Uh, definitely do recommend it. Just a great co-op title. I recommend playing it co-op. I know some people enjoy playing it solo as well, but uh, that's one of those games that I do think is tailor-made for you to play with a group of friends. But, you know, if you want to play it solo, go for it. Uh, we got It Takes Two and uh, A Way Out, the Haze Light Bundle. $20 on that. I mean, those games are great. Just a little pricey as far as that's concerned. Uh, what else we got? Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order Deluxe is $12.49, kind of pricey. Their Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition is $14. That's obviously a great buy, and I strongly recommend that. Octopath Traveler 2, 40% off for $35.99. Great deal on Octopath Traveler 2. Uh, Assassin's Creed Legendary Collection, $40 on that. That's just a lot of Assassin's Creed content, and if you don't own any of that, that that's a good pickup, but I just imagine most of you guys own a lot of that. Um, Crisis Remastered Trilogy, down to $9.99 with your Plus subscription. That's a fantastic deal. I kind of crapped on this original release when the price point came out at $50. But Crisis 1, Crisis 2, and Crisis 3 for $9.99. If, if you're a Plus subscriber, $12.49 without a Plus subscription. That's a fantastic deal. Cannot sing that deal's praises enough. I love Crisis 2 as well. I know some people prefer Crisis 1 over Crisis 2 and 3. Like, I didn't like Crisis 3 all that much, but Crisis 2 I thought was great. And Crisis 3 is okay, um, just not at the level of Crisis 2 in my opinion. And Crisis 1 is definitely a good time as well. $9.99 for that. Excellent, excellent deal. Strongly recommend that. Kingdom Come Deliverance Royal Edition is $3.99. Obviously a fantastic deal, especially as we're getting closer to the release of KCD 2. Definitely a good pickup there. Assassin's Creed Unity for $9, which is a game I definitely got to do another playthrough of here soon. I've been meaning to do that for a while. Uh, haven't gotten around to it. It was a train wreck when it came out, but all accounts are it's much better now. Saints Row the Third Remastered, $5.99 on that. Outlast for $1.99. That's a great deal. Uh, what else we got? Diablo Prime Evil Collection, $19.79. That's actually not too bad. Dead, uh, Dead Cells Medley of Pain Bundle, $24. Yes, that looks expensive, but Dead Cells is absolutely awesome, and I strongly recommend it. Recommend it. Uh, Deep Rock Galactic is $9. Great deal on that. Burnout Paradise Remastered, $4.99. Like a Dragon Ishin, $23.99. Octopath Traveler won $39.59 on that kind of a repulsive deal, but, uh, you know, given that Octopath Traveler 1 should not be $60 base, but what can you do? Tales of Arise Beyond the Dawn, $39.59 on that. That's the base game and the Beyond the Dawn expansion. Returnal, $29.39. What else we got? Final Fantasy VII OG, $6.39. Recommend people to go back and play through that as well. I know FF7 Remake is what most people are going after, but... I think the original is still worthwhile to go through. MGS5 still with that appreciated price of $12. Ghost Runner 2, $19.99. Digimon Survive for $14.99 is great. Wolf Among Us, $7.49. Obviously, excellent, excellent deal there. Uh, Legend of Heroes Trails into Reverie, 35% off for $39. Would like to see it a little bit cheaper. We do have uh, Trails to Daybreak coming out here uh, very short. Actually, I think it's out tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, excited for that, but a lot to catch up on, to say the least. Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age, 1999. Chrono Cross Radical Dreamers for 9.99 is really good. Disco Elysium, The Final Cut, 11.99 on that. Sonic Colors, $16. A lot of great deals across the board. Final Fantasy IX, by the way, 8.39. A lot of good JRPG stuff, as I said. Um, but yeah, that's gonna do it for me. That's like page... Well, what, what is it? Page 8 of 81. So, uh, yeah, barely scratching the surface. Again, I always filter it through the full games, game bundles, and premium editions so we can eliminate a lot of the superfluous DLC content and things of that nature. But that'll do it for me. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. As always, sound off there. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.